How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a capo in the New York crime family. That's like a vice president of an important company like IBM or Hooters. But now I'm Jimmy McDougal, because I'm in witness protection, living like a schnook in Canada. See, a while back, I got word that the bosses put out a contract on my Uncle Cheech. Poor guy's been hit on the head a few too many times. He was blabbing about all our best stuff. The Hoffa thing, the Kennedy thing, Scientology. I had to do something. So, I got me a sit down with the boss. Cheech made him a buttload of money over the years, so I figured I could appeal to the man's soft side. You are so f He was right. I was f I don't know about your business, but in mine, you can't whack a boss. Oh, Rocco, Fatso, Big Nose, long time. How you punks doing? No crap. The organization went nuts. These were my best friends from grade school coming after me. We used to shake down the homeless together just for kicks. I never thought they'd grow up to be so mean. I mean, I had just gotten those windows reinstalled and these sons of bitches knew it. I didn't know what to do. Where to go? Who to trust? So I crossed over to the dark side. Play ball with us, Jimmy. Help us lock away your cronies and we'll protect you. We'll put you somewhere they'll never find you. Somewhere they won't even think to look. Somewhere far. And remote. And cold. Very cold. Excuse me. Why is it gotta be cold? Because cold sucks and we don't like you. I see the logic in that. So that's what I did. Ratted out everyone I knew so that my children could grow up with a father that ain't dead. And that's how we came to be living here. In Vagina, Saskatchewan. That's Regina, you freaking moron! Potato, potato! Quit busting my balls, I'm talking here! That's my wife, Cookie. She's a pain in the ass, but I gotta say I love her. You know, cause she's standing right here. Anyway, if any of you think that starting a new life in Vagina... Regina? ...is gonna change the Falcons... McDougals. Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech He'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan Forget about it Forget about it Forget about it Run it by me again. Canada's bigger, but they got 10 states, not 50. They call them provinces, but yeah, 10 provinces. What did they do with the other 40? Why are you asking me? They're freaking retards. Their dollar's a freaking coin. And no one knows what it's worth. Sometimes 80 cents, others 90. They say sometimes their dollar's worth more than a dollar. That don't even make no sense. <laughs> sorry. See that? You cut that chick off and she's sorry. What do you gotta do to get a finger around here? Ah. There's our little angel. You believe these guys staring at me like a piece of meat? But do they hit on me? No. They're such chickens. What's so scary about me? I'm pretty, I'm nice, and if they just told me what they wanted, I'd do it. You'd better be joking, Teresa Maria. And even if you are, I don't want to hear it. God has given you something sacred. And you're going to keep it to yourself until you get a ring. And as far as why they're afraid to talk to you, I have no idea. Look, sweetheart, you can't blame these boys for having no balls. They was born and raised in vagina. Where's your brother? Oh, there he is. Look at him, Jimmy. He's making friends. If I don't pass my English paper, I'm off the curling team. So you're gonna write it for me, McDougal. I'm sorry, Gus, but that's cheating. <laughs> what do you think now, eh? Pretty sure it's still cheating. Afraid I can't let you do that, Jimmy. It'll bring too much attention upon yourself. But having a cop in a red suit up my ass 24-7 is gonna make me blend? Point taken. I'll bring it up at the next briefing. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. What did we say? Come on, they're killing him! How's beating him to a pulp gonna blow my cover? It's what any father or but single mother would do. Again, point taken. Wait here. Gentlemen? Is there a problem? Just playing, officer. Teaching them hockey, eh? Hoof it out. Eating lunch. Liars! They're beating me up because I won't do their homework. Oh, my God. He's spilling the beans to a cop. He's turned into a rat, a squealer, a stoolie. Oh, what a horrible role model I've been. Thank you for your honesty, young man. As for the rest of you, if this happens again, justice will be swift and severe. Well, not so much severe as compassionate. 
And not swift at all. But our judges are appointed for life, and that can't be good for you. Now, on your way. You see, Jimmy, the matter was handled peacefully with words and idle threats. That's how we do it here in the Great White North. When you grasp that fact, your true assimilation will begin. For Canada! And whatever she stands for! I don't get it. Why don't you fight back these bastards? Hey, language! I mean, why don't you fight back these children born out of wedlock? As Gandhi said, violence never solves anything. Petey, my whole life is based on solving problems with violence. I'm not like you, Pop. I'm not a Neanderthal. Of course not. We're Italian. I mean caveman, Pop. Anthropology? Uh, language. I'm finished. Can I go puke now? Where are your manners, young lady? You will wait till the rest of us are done, and then you can go puke. Evening all. Oh, great shiner kid. Way to go. It's a beaut. I know. I know. I should see the other guy. No, he's fine, actually. I'm ashamed of you. I spit on you. Petey's getting picked on at school. Well, in that case, kid, what you need to learn is the sweet science. Oh, great science. They just did anthropology. Can I please go puke? No. But if I wait too long, the food will digest. And then puking won't do me any good at all. That's just the risk you'll have to take. And I'm growing very weary of this attitude, Teresa Maria. Fine. God. Guys, sweet science. It's nothing to do with science. I'm talking about boxing. Like I learned you when you was a kid, Jimmy. Remember? You was a kind and gentle teacher, Cheech. I still remember the first time I beat a kid into a coma. I made a man out of you, I can make a man out of the kid. We'll take him down to the gym tomorrow and learn him a few moves. Can I come? Nah, they don't let broads in gyms. Go, run, make me a sandwich. Gina, honey, what is this drawing supposed to be? What, are you blind? It's me, sticking Cheech's head in a bear trap. But why, sweetheart? Okay, this all started because Cheech was mouthing off. If he got dead, they'd let us back in New York. Oh, honey, that's so sweet. But your daddy sung like a canary. The mob wants him dead way more than your uncle. We're stuck here in Canada for good, so we just better get used to it. A. A. Jeez, why won't the kid hit back? He's a mutton for punishment. He's just warming up, don't worry. Under all that tree-hugging, love-your-fellow-man atheism lies the son of the Roman Empire, a true falcon. Shh. Blend. A son of the Roman Empire, a true McDougal. What the f*** are you looking at? I'll gouge out your f***ing eyeballs, I'll f*** in your f***ing skull. Nice blend. Petey, my son! You suck at this! I never wanted to box, Pop. You made me box. But this ain't boxing. Boxing is two guys hitting each other. One guy hitting another is assault. I guess no one will be saving your whale friends now, eh? Who's up for a blubber sandwich? What did you say? I said I like my whales chopped up in a little itty bitty fish sticks. Whales are mammals, you imbecile! Fish. Look at that, Jimmy. Petey made the kids sleep with the fishes. It was fun. I didn't care so much for the part where he was pummeling me, but I really loved the end part where I got to hit him. Seems we found the kid's trigger. What do you mean, trigger? Like how you get when somebody says Pacino's better than De Niro. I just want to kill him! Although, Scent of a Woman was a fine performance. Who said that? I'll kill him! But that's how Petey gets when somebody makes fun of that women have the right to vote crap that he's into. I'm sorry, Uncle Cheech. I don't know what came over me. You see what I mean? You're a killer, kid. Don't never apologize. Okay, sorry. I gotta say, he's assimilating the Canada better than any of us. And you, save it for the next fight. What next fight? I'm signing you up for a real amateur fight. With this trigger of yours, they're gonna make a mint! I don't know, violence is wrong. But I did kinda like it. Ah, the sweet science of rationalization. Okay, I'll do it, but on one condition. Half the proceeds gotta go to Doctors Without Borders, and the other half to an internist. Cause I think I'm bleeding internally. Relax, son, they got socialized medicine up here. We can keep it all! <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, can I talk to you? 
I know how Daddy feels about me dating, but there's this boy at school I really, really like, and he likes me. And it's not fair that I can't ever go out with anybody. Don't worry, baby. Of course you can see this boy. We'll just keep it our little secret. So, tell me about him. What's this boy's name? Mr. Henderson. What? He's so cool. He changed my F to a C. He said he couldn't make it an A because it would be too suspicious. So to make it up to me, he gave me this. Teresa Maria, you are not sleeping with your teacher. Of course I'm not. God! I'm just letting him think I will to get better grades and jewelry. What are you, crazy? You will end this relationship immediately. First you say yes, now you say no. You're such a hypocrite, I hate you! Oh, diamonds. All I ever got for fooling around with a teacher was an A. Yeah, me too. But then, I went to Catholic school. stopping him you know I'm reading up on this kid PD's fighting next he's the top kid in the province a real killer eh, you don't look so tough okay he's tough but it don't matter PD can take him well you'll fix a lot more fights than me I'll take your word for it look at him out there getting in shape getting some confidence becoming a man just like his dad oh huh? Is that a sausage in your pocket, or are you just glad to see me? <laughs> nah, it's a sausage. Hey, don't look at me. He who smelt it dealt it. Who do you want me to rat out now? Jimmy, your son has to lose his next fight. What? No chance. The kid's a natural. He can go all the way. That's the problem. Petey is an unknown fighting the top-ranked boy in the province. If he wins, it's news. His picture will be in the paper, your enemies will see it and find you. To make matters worse, purposely achieving notoriety is a drastic violation of your witness protection agreement. We will no longer be authorized or permitted to protect you. Oh, I thought you just wanted a piece of the action. You'll be on your own, Jimmy. Just when you need our help most. Come on, lighten up! It's just a kid's boxing match. Look. I know you Canadians ain't into boxing because you're all peaceable with your clean air and apologizing all the time Stop and... right there, sir. I'll have you know that during World War II, the Canadian Army gained more land mass per individual soldier than any other army. Secondly, our major metropolitan areas are just as polluted, dirty, and disgusting as anything you have south of the border. Don't tell me we got clean air, buddy. And in terms of apologizing, well, perhaps I did overreact, and for that I'm sorry. I'll never get vagina. The boy can't win, Jimmy. Simple as that. So do yourself a favor. For once in your life, follow the rules. For Canada! And whatever she stands for! You are right. Petey's got a forfeit. It's gonna crush him. How do I tell my little boy he's gotta stop doing the only thing he's ever been good at? Get him drunk and a couple of whores. You'll be okay with it. I'm proud of you, Petey. You finally found something you're good at. Pop, I'm a straight-A student. I meant something that matters. But, son, tomorrow's fight. You can't win. I can, Pop. I trained hard. No, Petey, that's not what I mean. It's just that... Okay, look. I don't think you know the real reason we came to Vagina. And it's time you knew the truth. So it's not because you threw your mob boss out of a 19-story window, then ratted out all your lifelong friends to save you behind like a whiny little schoolgirl? Okay, so you do know. But if you win, the feds will take away our protection and the mob will find us. What? Petey, you gotta do the right thing here. You gotta show some balls. Be a quitter. I only got into boxing to make you proud of me. But you don't want to be proud of me. You never did. Petey. I could be a contender, Pop, instead of a geek, which is what I am. No, it's bum. Instead of a bum, which is what... Oh, you mean you. Y you're not quoting the movie. You're the geek. That's very clever. Stop the car. Where are you going? I'm going to the gym to train. I'm going to fight this fight with no help from you and no trigger. I've sharpened my mind and honed my instincts, and nothing will stop me. You ready for this? That's my smartest kid. You always gotta outdo me, don't ya? Puking is my thing. You got the nerd thing, and the politically correct thing, and now the boxing thing. All I got is bulimia, and you gotta take that away from me? Now I got nothing! I hate 
hate you! Next! What have I done? Why so glum, Jimmy boy? Our problems are solved. They are? That's great! How? I just placed our bet. Petey's going down, and we're the only ones who know about it. <laughs> Jimmy, you said the kid was gonna forfeit. Yeah, but he ain't. Where'd you get the money, anyhow? I used the nest egg. You idiot! That's all the money I saved from the old life. Now he's gonna be on the lamb and broke. Jimmy, we won't be broke. We can't lose. As long as we don't pull the trigger on the kid, he's gonna get pulverized. That's my son, you moron! Your nephew! You want him to get pulverized? Well, it is a lot of money. Okay, okay. Then we gotta change the kid's mind. I tried. He won't listen to reason. Then we lean on him old school, threaten his family. This time I ain't letting you up. Daddy! Daddy! Be right in, princess. I gotta go talk to my little girl. You stay here and finish the job. You mean, drown myself? Why would I? Hey, I do stuff for you all the time. I ask this one little thing. Okay, okay. You don't gotta make a federal case out of it. <laughs> What's the matter, Princess? Got a problem? Well, let's say someone had an uncle and they wanted to whack him. But their mom said they can't cause... Sweetie, you still looking to whack your Uncle Cheech? That won't help nothing. No, no, not me. This is for a friend of mine. Um, Nancy. And, and she wants to whack her uncle. Uh, Nancy. And she asked me for advice, so I said I'd ask my dad, because he's the smartest guy in the whole world when it comes to whacking people. And the handsomest. Sweetie, it's not about looks, but thank you. The important thing is, I get assigned a hit, someone's getting it up the Asti Spamanti. <laughs> Jimmy, language. What? It's not like I said You just did. No, I didn't. I said Asti Spamanti. You said after that, you mother c***** and Cookie, you're breaking my Swear in front of our little girl again, I will cut your balls off and stick them up your f***ing ass. I don't want to raise no f***ing potty mouth. Okay! Gina, daddy, sorry. But it's good you came to me with this thing. Remember, family is the only thing you can count on. Can I at least? No. I hate you! I can't believe we're in this mess. There's got to be a way to fix it. Think! What would Don Gambini do? Are you kidding? He'd whack the kid, whack the Mountie, then have a nice Chianti with his showgirl mistress. Yeah, he was a great man. Funny how you only come to appreciate someone after you kill him. Where the hell's Petey? Gina told me what he's about to do. No way I'm gonna let him fight that kid. He'll get killed. Well, you know, maybe just crippled. Petey, get your dumb ass out here. We're going home. Why didn't I come up with that? A2 Brute? Yeah, me friggin' Brute. Get your ass in the car. No, Mother, I'm doing this. I don't need a trigger. I don't need anyone. I'll win on my own, and Mother, I'm very disappointed in your Latin. Petey, wait! You can't go out there. You'll get killed. I know I've been a bitch lately. Go on. That's all. You know what burns me? At the apex of my moment of glory, you're all trying to stop me. So, if none of you care about my needs, why should I care about yours? What a drama queen. Fall down, you friggin' moron! Is that a way to talk to your son? Well, then you say something! Fall down and count to ten, you friggin' moron! No! Wait two more rounds! We make an extra C note if he goes down on the third. You just couldn't let him whack him, could you? No, you had to be the big man and fix it all. Oh, big man, you're such a big man, big man! Okay, I screwed up! He should be dead, and it's my fault that he's not. Can we let it go already? You guys do know that I'm standing right here, right? Baby, I can't take this no more. I can't take this no more, neither. We good? We good. We're in this together. Always have been, always will. Hate crime legislation is for pussies! No! We must protect minorities. We must 
punish those who kill because of skin color or sexual orientation? But wait, murder is already a punishable offense. So hate crime laws aren't punishing the act, but the thought. But the state shouldn't be allowed to decide what are appropriate thoughts. The persecuted minorities need our protection. But we must keep the state out of our heads. I don't know. Could it be that not everything is black and white? That we all must, from time to time, listen to opposing points of view? I don't know. I don't know. Eh, what the heck. He lost! I couldn't be more. Just give me a second, turn away. And justice is served. Sort of. I think. No, it is. It's okay. Good job, me! Gotta hand it to you, Petey. You stood up to everyone, including me. Even scarier than that, your mother. But in the end, you came through and you cheated. For the family. I just realized that, as Khan said, there's a moral shade of gray in which we all must consider how other people- Hey, we don't really care about the thought process. We're proud, so just leave it there and shut up. Petey, I never doubted you. You're my big brother, and I always count on you to do the right thing. So I bet on you to win, you dumb wop. Every penny I had. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our story. Pretty good, huh? But if you think that's the only story we got, us Falcones living as McDougals in the great municipality of Vagina, well, forget about it. Daddy, that's such a cheesy ending. I'm just trying to get him back for next week. You want to get him back for next week? Here's how you get him back for next week. What are you, crazy? Go to your room! God! That's, like, so unfair! La 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 Good evening. My name is Peter McDougal. At least it is now. I have also been called a geek, a nerd, a geeky nerd, a nerdy geek, and a geeky geeky nerd nerd. But for most of my life, I've been known as P.D. Falcone, son of Jimmy Falcone, one of New York's most notorious mobsters. But despite what you may have read about my father, he's actually been a very loving man who would do anything for his family. Strike three, you're out! I mean, home run! But then one day, the mob turned against him, as mobsters are prone to do. And they didn't care if they got any of us in the process. But he protected his family and heroically helped convict some of the most horrible men in the country, all of whom were at my communion. And that's how we wound up here, in witness protection in Regina, Regina. Saskatchewan. And if any of you think this story wasn't just one humongous rationalization, Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and a capo with a gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it! Forget about it! Forget about it! I got here as soon as I could, Jimmy. What seems to be the problem? I miss pizza. I beg your pardon? You made it sound like an emergency. It is. See, I'm in this weekly poker game, and the guys order these pies, like ketchup on cardboard, and not the good kind. So I was shooting my mouth off and promised to show them real pizza. So I'm kind of committed. You should be committed. And where do you intend to get these pies? 
That's the beauty part. I know this place back home, best pizza outside of Italy. And they promise delivery in 30 minutes or they're free, so odds are we won't even have to pay. I'm sorry, no. Such an order may tip off your enemies. As for poker, need I remind you of the pitfalls of gambling? Aw, oh, man, don't you do anything for fun? I absolutely do. I fish, I hunt, I read, I enjoy the occasional menage a trois, I dabble in embroidery and crochet, but what I don't do is gamble. A hundred bucks says you do. Hmm. All right. I know your secrets. It's time you learned one of mine. Whoa! I don't want to know who you manage a trois with. Imagine, if you will, a young McCool. Aimless, directionless, muscleless, and then he discovered the wager. At first it was just harmless games of gin rummy for a penny a point, but soon that wasn't enough. It had to be a quarter, a dollar, a hundred, nor did it matter what the game was. Cards, dice, ponies, pigs! Why do you look like a hippie if it was the 90s? Stay on topic, Jimmy. Never in my life had I felt such a rush. I was hooked. I'd go on week-long binges and forget to feed horse. I put my sainted mother in a home and lost her rent money at the track. I turned my back on almost everyone I cared about, and they me. And I was about to lose the only one I had left. Don't go. Without you, I have no one. You're right, I'll never bet again. I know I've said this before, but this time I mean it. Yes, really. And that was the moment I vowed to put my life together. The moment I decided to be a Mountie. And I have not wagered a penny since. I just got one question. What kind of landlord lets you keep a horse in your apartment? Indeed. For Canada! And flashbacks that remain relevant to the storyline! Isn't it a glorious day in Regina? The sun is shining, the snow is melting. One can look out and see endless miles of wheat and wheat. What's up with you? Petey's got a girlfriend. Shut up! Oh, a girlfriend. Tell me about her. Her name's Rita. They kissed in the parking lot behind Mrs. McGeevy's car. Shut up! Ow! Don't ever tell me to shut up. Hello? Yes, Petey's here. Who may I say is calling? Oh, Rita! Petey speaks so highly of you. Mother, no! He speaks highly of us, too. Oh, get the f*** out of here! Mom! Ow! What was that for? Don't ever hit my big brother, you little squirt! Okay. Thanks, Gina. That was really... Two bucks. What? Two bucks! Uh, okay. So, Rita, what are you doing next Sunday? Would you like to come for family dinner? Rita, say no! Run! Good. We can't wait to meet you. Bye-bye. Oh, did you want to talk to her? That's okay. I'm gonna go take a bath. Race five. Schwa, schwa. So sorry to disturb, Premier. These documents just arrived from Ottawa for your immediate attention. Keep your knickers on, laddie. I'm playing. Put them with the others. All right, Jimmy, you Scottish bastard. It'll cost you five more if you want to see my cards. Or do you not have the balls, you nutless lassie? I see your five and raise another five. Fold. Read them and weep. Kings and nines. Three ladies. Sounds like my crib every night. hey -o. <gasps> Grab a chair, McCool. We need some fresh blood. Uh, thank you, sir, but I don't gamble. Come on, McCool. The engine's taking everything we got. And how often do you hear that? Fellas, if the man don't gamble, the man don't gamble. Schwa, schwa. Where I come from, the only men who don't gamble are ladies. Well, I suppose one hand won't hurt. Uh, Jimmy, I'm a little short on cash. Would you extend a man a small loan? <laughs> you sure you want to do this? What about everything you said the other day? I've been thinking about that these past few seconds. I haven't gambled in almost 15 years. Clearly a man with a gambling problem couldn't achieve that. Okay, I'll give you a friendly loan at 18%, but this is business. No one's gonna take it easy on you, not even me. Jimmy, if I enter that game, it's you and the others I'd be worried about. Any up, boys, it's my deal. Gentlemen, I don't even have to look at the cards. I look into your eyes and I know what's in your mind. 
You want us to think you made your straight, but you never got the nine. You made your trip sevens, but you don't know if they're good enough. You're bluffing with an ace-king high, and you're cheating on your wife. You're disgusting. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? <laughs> I see you're ten, and raise ten more. What are you doing? Nothing. Just a long blink. Open your eyes. No. All right. I still think you're bluffing. Call. Full house. And finish blink. Raise 500 and that should send you home. Jimmy, you just walked into my trap. I see your 500 and I raise you 10,000. <gasps> Bloody oh, hell! Swear, swear. Buddy, you're already into me deeper than you want to be. What's the matter? Are you chicken? McCool, you don't got this one. Buck, 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 buck. You started strong, but now Lady Luck is banging another guy. Oink, 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 oink. Just walk away. Moo, moo. Who you calling a cow? All right, you got it. Ten G's more. Four kings. Four aces. What? You owe me 50 large, Special Agent. I... I... I don't have it. Then I'll put you on a plan. In the meantime, I'll take some collateral. No! Not horse! What have I done? <clears throat> I tried to warn you, buddy. Now I own you. For Canada! And... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just walk him out from here. Hey, Cheech! I'm making a list of stuff to ask for from McCool. He can't pay us back, so he's got to let us do whatever we want. What should I put you down for? A puppy. You don't need McCool for that. You can get a puppy anyway. Can I? No, because I'd have to walk it and clean up after it. I'm thinking more like taking a family on a cruise. Me included? Yeah, you included. Then who's going to watch the puppy? There is no puppy! Jimmy, what kind of sad childhood did you have that you hate puppies? Hi, I need your help. How do I get Rita out of coming for dinner? Why do you want to do that? Because she's Persian, and you know how our family is with people who are different from them. But what's wrong with being Persian? Everyone loves Paris! No, not Parisian. Persian! Iranian from Iran? Oh, you mean like one of those chicks who straps bombs on her chest and goes into nightclubs? I never got that look. No, that's what I'm talking about! That's racist! You take that back! Racism is ugly, and I'm pretty! Mom! Petey said we're racist! And I'm pleased to say I am no longer gambling and I'm ready to pay my debt. You're a little light. Uh, the ATM was out. Bank messed up the transfer. Checks in the mail? You don't think we heard these before? Dog ate it. He has a dog? All right, I don't have it all. But I'm doing the best I can. I understand. It's a lot of money to get all at once. So, in lieu of cash... There's a number of favors you can do for us. That's blackmail! You owe me 50 G's from gambling. Wanna take that up with your supervisor? Jimmy, please, don't do anything rash. I've taken on a whole array of extra jobs. I'll get you your money by any means necessary. Except crime. How do you make money without crime? Indeed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to attend. I miss you, old friend. <laughs> I deserve as much, but I shall get you back. For Canada! Oh, where these boots are made for walking. Are you satisfied with your long-distance carrier? Stand. I don't believe it. I know! They printed my letter! Not that. That's McCool on the cover. I can't believe he'd stoop this low for money. It's really sad. 
Jeez, I don't know if I should feel bad for the guy or intimidated. There you are. Did you know your son is ashamed of us? What? Petey, get down here! Yes, Pop? Your mother says you're ashamed of us. What the hell's that about? Okay, I'll be honest. This girl I like is coming to dinner, and she's Middle Eastern, and I'm terrified that you, one of you, most likely you, will offend her, and she'll come to hate me for it. Petey, you gotta relax about this stuff. When I was growing up in the old neighborhood, we was all everything. We was all friends. It didn't mean nothing. We called each other Dagos and Hebes and Mix and N-words. You actually used the N-word? Yeah, but only to their faces, never behind their backs. That would be insensitive, something a spick would do. Ugh. You see? Your father makes good sense. Mother, a turban? Really? It's not a turban, it's a towel. Yeah, what's wrong with having a towel head? You guys are killing me. Nobody's killing nobody. Just let me frisk this girl when she gets here. No bomb, no problem. Special Agent McCool can't come to the door right now. Please leave a message in the mailbox. We know you're in there, McCool. No, you don't. He's got a point, Jimmy. Can anyone ever really know anything? McCool, you can't avoid us. It's your job to take care of us. My next payment isn't due until tomorrow. We ain't here for the money. Oh, in that case, may I interest you in some Helen DiCarlo cosmetics? Jeez, you look like hell. Have you lost height? Let me go get my samples. I'll be right back. Look at him, Cheech. He's a shadow of his former self. No dignity, no self-respect. He's given up on everything he cares about. And it's my fault. So? Just saying. All right. Who wants moisturizer? McCool, sit down. You know that list of requests we gave you? I think we was thinking too small. First, we'd like to go visit the old neighborhood. Jimmy, you know that's impossible. Then pay up. Fine. I'll work it out. Also, maybe a cruise. Fine. And a puppy. Fine. No puppy! Fine. Come on, McCool, pull yourself together. You're making me feel bad. Where's our usual back and forth of Tony Banter? You know what, Jimmy? You're right. Good, let's get back to it. So, if they do another one of those private rocket ships to outer space, I think Petey would like that. No, no to everything. It all stops now. Yeah, this is what I like. You and me going at it, mambo a mambo. Now my turn. You want me to take this up with your supervisor? You don't have to, Jimmy. I will pay you what I owe you, but I will besmirch my uniform no more. As of tomorrow, I will resign my commission as a Mountie. Holy hell. Bum bum bum. Jimmy, look at this. I'm talking to a squirrel. Bum bum bum. <laughs> I mean, you should have seen the guy. I know it's hard to imagine, but he looked bad. Real bad. It is hard to imagine. <laughs> I never should have lent a guy with a gambling problem all that money, and then I pushed him on top of it. He's a stand-up guy for a cop. He's always been fair to us, and we could do a lot worse. Even his quitting shows a little back bacon. That's how they say it in Canada. Jimmy, are you developing a conscience? Conscience? Nah. I just got this inner sense of right and wrong that's impelling me toward moral action. What are you saying? I broke him, so I gotta fix him. I'm gonna let him off the hook. Wipe the slate clean. You really are a lovable teddy bear. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Mommy! Daddy! I can't sleep! What's wrong, sweetheart? I heard you and Daddy talking through the wall, and Daddy says he's gonna let someone who owes him money not pay? I don't understand! I'm scared! Oh, sweetie, there's nothing to be scared of. The man owes me more money than he's got, and it's destroying him. He's doing it again, Ma! He's doing it again! <laughs> oh, sweetie, it's a sin to let others suffer. Oh, like a hurt animal? Then we gotta do the Christian thing and put him out of his misery. Let's whack him. Aw, oh, Gina. That's very generous of you, Jimmy. I would be forever in your debt, and so I cannot accept. No strings, honest. And the blackmail stops. You can stay a Mountie. It's more complicated than that. To recover from my addiction, I have to take responsibility for my actions, even if that means doing shameful, shameful things. And eh, no one's gonna buy that magazine. Really? Tell me the truth, Jimmy. Do you find me attractive? Okay, we're not going there. Isn't there anyone you'd be willing to take help from? Mm -hmm. 
Only a true loved one. But I have no siblings. Daddy left when I was very young and Mummy lost her marbles. All I had was horse. Tell you what, don't quit your Mountie thing just yet. Give me till the end of the week. Can you sign this? Certainly. You want a party? Certainly not. Well, define party. I still don't get it. It's simple. McCool won't let me forgive his debt, so he's just gonna have to find the money on his own. He'll give it back to me, and everybody's square. I have found a satchel of money on the street. It must be returned to its rightful owner. What an asshole. I can't believe it. You try to help a guy and it bites you in the ass. Well, you know what they say. Try to help a guy and it bites you in the ass. The funny thing is, I still want to figure out a way to help him. I'll get it, I'll get it. Hi, Petey. Thanks for inviting me. Is that her? I'll be right out. Look, there's no time to explain. Just don't judge me by my family. And whatever happens, I'll protect you. And no, I have no idea why there's a horse in our living room. Hi. You must be Rita. I'm Cookie. She's adorable. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Come sit. Dinner will be ready in about ten minutes. So, Rita, tell me about yourself. What would you like to know? I don't know what I'd like to know. What do your parents do? I knew it. Just because she's from the Middle East, you automatically assume her parents must be terrorists or taxi drivers. I never said... My father is a dentist and my mother is a stay-at-home mom. And no, it's not because her father will punish her mother if she works, thank you very much. Two of my wives were stay-at-home moms. Well, without the kids. <laughs> Basically, they were leeches. <laughs> Your uncle's funny. Not really, just retarded. So, Rita, are you thinking about college yet? Why? Because Muslim women aren't allowed to go to school? They're just supposed to stay home and be subservient to their man? Is that what you're asking? I give up. Jimmy, you want to ask her anything? Okay. Rita, say something you did is destroying a guy, and all you want to do is make peace. But he don't want peace. He just wants to keep the same old pattern going. What do you do? What's that supposed to be? Some warped metaphor of the Arab-Israeli conflict? Rita, hi. I love what you're wearing. What'd you expect? You people! What, she was supposed to show up in a burqa and a turban going... Petey, enough! Can you talk about anything other than my race? Me? Race? That's it, a race! Yes, Petey, I'm Persian, and that's all you can see. But I'm a real person with real feelings, and you've done nothing but make me uncomfortable since I got here. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal. You all seem lovely, but I don't think I can stay for dinner. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with driving a taxi. It's an honest, decent living. And yeah, I lied. My father drives a taxi. You dirty, racist snob. <laughs> One way or another, them Arabs always explode. Look, he won't take the money from me. If I just give it to you, he'll know it came from me anyway. You gotta get this money on your own. I know he broke his promise to you and you're mad, but he's your best friend and you're all he's got. So you can stay mad at him or you can help him. His life is in your hands. Or you can keep bunking with cheats for the rest of your life. <gasps> Whoa! I've never been with a four-legged broad, but I'm open to anything. Please don't kiss. Please don't kiss.
How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcon, a capo in a Gambini crime town. Now, I'm Jimmy McDoo, living in witness protection like a schnook. But I gotta admit, sometimes I can't help but wonder if it ain't my own damn fault. You see, a while back I needed to ask the Don for a favor. Oh, wanna no taste, sweet fishy? Don Gambini, I come to you on my knees to ask you to call off the hit on my uncle Cheech. Cheech, he talks a lot, but he don't mean no- No! By the way, not easy keeping the Don in one piece. He was a great man, a brilliant criminal mind, but kind of a spaz. As I was saying, Cheech don't mean no harm. He's just a little light in the cranial region. Hey, Jimmy, look at that storm brewing. Is that lightning? Son of a bitch, it is lightning. Jimmy, that better be a gun in your pocket. I beg your forgiveness, Don Gambini. But as I was saying, Godfather, my Uncle Cheech is a good man. Always been a good earner for you, and if you could only show him some mercy. Jimmy, you come to me on a good day. I received news today that my beautiful daughter Tina is to wed. On this day, I am a happy man, filled with much love. Does this mean you'll give my Uncle Cheech another chance? Nah, that ship has sailed. But what it means is that you may bring your family to the wedding. Especially that daughter of yours, that Teresa. What a piece of ass! So like I said, sometimes I can't help but wonder if it all ain't my own damn fault. Cause that's why we wound up in witness protection here in Vagina- Regina? Saskatchewan. But if you think I'm gonna beat myself up over it, forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. I'm just 15. Why do I have to learn to drive now? Because driving is what men do. My father taught me how to drive a getaway car. His father taught him how to drive a getaway car, and his father was run over by a getaway car. Is this supposed to convince me? Petey, there's nothing better in the world than driving. Well, drinking. Drinking and driving. But not together. You don't drink and drive, you stupids! You know, I wasn't gonna bring this up, but since you're into this whole bonding thing, my school's having a father-son recycle drive this Friday. Will you come with me? Listen, Petey, I'm pretty sure I have something on Friday. I just haven't made up what it is yet. Now come on, make like we're being chased by the cops! All right, all right, give me the keys. <laughs> keys. <laughs> Okay, what we'll do now is called fleeing the scene of a crime. Drive! 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 The nuclear-powered engine. Not my best idea. What do we do? This is a very delicate situation, son. Just follow my lead. Ow! Ow! My neck! My neck! Oh my god, Pop. That's Richard Wheaton, one of the richest men in the world. Really? In that case... My neck, my back, my knee! You're Richard Wheat, then? Yes, I'm afraid I am. Computer genius, inventor, world-renowned wildlife photographer? I'm also a licensed manicurist. Few people know that. I'm Petey McDougal. This is such an honor. I saw you compete at the Winter X Games. You were awesome! I guess. 
If we live in a world where silver medals are considered awesome... Where I come from, it's still third place. Uh, this is Jimmy, my parent and or guardian. Easy. I just been in a terrible wreck. You hit me. Okay, we'll call it even. Actually, I should thank you. I was about to go into production with that nuclear engine. Well, nice meeting you. Pop, the least you could do is give the man a ride. No, I can do less. I live just up the hill. Oh, all right, come on. This guy just takes and takes. Your cuticles look very healthy, Jimmy. You can just say the barn door is open, but thanks. Okay, over just a smidge. Little more. I want his thingy pointing to the front door. It's classy, but also informational. Cookie, I need a word. Well, if it ain't my special agent McCool. <laughs> Look how handsome you look in your shiny red uniform all pressed and clean. Oh, have you been working out? Where do you get guns like these? <laughs> My gun was issued at headquarters. I know that's not what you meant, but I felt it prudent to change the subject. And I'm here to tell you that you cannot keep this statue on your lawn. Why not? This is some fancy shit. For one, a Canadian family would never possess such a thing, and its medium-sized genitalia is a neighborhood distraction. Medium? Hello? Boy, oh boy, can you imagine having a jablong like that? And no freaking arms to get at it? I mean, come on, McCool, guy to guy. If you were him, and you couldn't give it a little tug now and then, you'd want to kill yourself. But you couldn't, because you got no arms. I'm leaving now, Uncle Cheech, and I shall trust you can understand why I won't shake your hand. Resident, resident, Bill, resident... Oh, yay, Victoria's Secret Catalog! Cookie, you cannot throw away your neighbor's mail. That is an indictable offense. Cheese and whiskers, this is someone's baby bonus check. What kind of check now? <laughs> A hey, baby bonus check, Gina. It's Canada's gift to the parents of all children. Go on, Chief. It was instituted after World War II to reduce financial stress on soldiers' families. Australia has the same baby bonus policy, but theirs is racist to ensure white control of the country, and so not really the same at all. And who's eligible for this baby bonus? All parents of children under seven. My mother got the baby bonus for me, and she always said... I don't need money for this child. I would pay to have a child this good. And we'd laugh, and she would hold me. And then we'd make pancakes and cry because Daddy loved box wine and pornography. But I say too much. For Canada! And the fact that we're not Australia! Most of the art is my own, of course. I paint what I feel and feel what I paint. So, you feel like a clown riding a blue wolf? Sometimes, Jimmy, sometimes. I see you enjoy tennis. No, those are snowshoes, one of my many passions. I once spent an entire winter lost in the forests of Manitoba, with nothing but those snowshoes and a People magazine. The magazine meant nothing, of course, but those shoes, those shoes saved my life. Science was your first love, though, right, Mr. Wheaton? Same as me? Yes, Petey, same as you. Well, we should get going, Petey. We got that thing. What thing? You know, the thing, the old thingy thing thing. What are you talking about? I think if I'm reading your father correctly, he wants to leave because he is very, very bored. Yes, thank you. That thing. Come on, Pop, can't we just stay a little longer? I want to see the science lab. You do have a science lab, right? <laughs> Why, they'd take away my nerd card if I didn't. You have a nerd card? Oh, come on, Petey. I gotta get back. Maybe Mr. Wheaton could give me a ride home. Is that all right with you, Mr. Wheaton? Sure, if it's okay with your father. Let me think about this. Get out of my bedroom. There's something you don't say very often. Have you ever thought about being a mother? I've had some scares. Why? How would you like to rip off the government and get something for nothing? Sounds like something I might be interested in. It's called the baby bonus. God, I'm not gonna have a baby. Have you seen what having a baby does to a female body? I mean, I love mom, but look at her. You don't have to have a baby. All you have to do is pretend to be my mother and we get a government check every two weeks. What do you mean, pretend? 
Like... acting? Yeah, like a movie star. I could do that. But I won't do nudity unless it's intrinsic to the character and tastefully done. So I'm thinking a 60-40 split. I get 65 because I came up with it. So uh, you good with 30? How'd it go with Petey's driving? The kid's hopeless. I gotta ask you something, Cook. Be honest. Is he mine? Jimmy, sometimes I'm not even sure he's mine. So where is he? I left him out at some jillionaire's house in the country. Petey ran him off the road, so we drove him to his mansion, and it had all kinds of stuff the kid liked. Are you out of your mind? You left a teenage boy with some strange man you know nothing about who has toys and gadgets to lure young boys to his compound? Well, when you put it like that, it sounds bad. Mom! Dad! I can drive! It's so easy! Watch! I hope you don't mind that I gave him a quick lesson. How the hell did you learn so fast? Well, why didn't you just tell me that the spark plug ignites the air-fuel mixture so that combustion can occur, and that the intake and exhaust valves open at just the right moment for the engine to fire? <laughs> Man, what else didn't you tell me? Uh, always check your mirrors? Let's drive some more, okay? Of course, son, I'd love to. Let me just get my... He's a better father than I am. He's also taller and richer than you are. I swear to God that just slipped. Great breakfast, Cookie. Sure is. They say breakfast is the most important meal in the morning. Mr. Wheaton says a man could survive on a grain of sand for two weeks if he had to. Yeah, if he doesn't mind love handles. Anyway, Ma, we gotta run. I'm taking Gina to the mall. Aw, that fills my heart. Two sisters spending the day together shopping. Since we moved here... I never get to see my sainted sister, that painted hoe, and I miss her so. Here she goes. Time for the waterworks. Boo-hoo-hoo. You will not disrespect your grandmother that way. You're not my mother. You're my sister. Don't talk back to me, young lady. You know, Mr. Wheaton and his sister have a variety show in England. Jeez, Petey, can we talk about something else for a change? How's about football? Sure. Did you know Mr. Wheaton's great-grandfather invented football? Every time someone throws a pass, his family gets six dollars. You're killing me, Petey. On and on about this guy. It's not like the man can fly. Just invented it. It runs on beetle dung. I've got one for you, Petey. That's the gayest thing I ever seen in my life. And I watch Glee. OMG. It says here we could go to prison for committing fraud. That's fraud. And only if you get caught. I can't go to prison, Gina. Those guys would go crazy for me. It would be a woman's prison. I'm nuts. Even worse, I'd have to chop off my hair and buy a flannel. Take it easy. No one's going to jail because you are a great actress. Right, right, right. I forgot. Okay, let me get into character. Teresa McDougal. Here we go. Say it. Oh, for the love of God. Action! I am Teresa McDougal. This is my daughter, Gina. We are residents of Canada and have never collected the baby bonus because I was working in the Peace Corporation helping to feed the indigo people of Del Taco. I'm deaf as a stone, dear. I just assigned the numbers. Over there. Now you know why it says, do not write on this part of the form. Mama! Jimmy, are you okay? It looks like there was a hit in here. There wasn't, was there? Nah, come on, Cook. What do you think I am, an animal? I only whack people in the garage. So what's going on? You only make sauce when you're upset. Ah, oh, Cookie. I'm like an open book to you. It's like you open a book and go, geez, there's Jimmy in a book. What is it, big man? Okay, it's just that Petey's hanging out with his new fancy friend and I feel like I've been replaced. You ain't been replaced, you big dope. Petey looks up to you. If you want your boy back, you take him back. Good news, Pop. 
I invited Mr. Wheaton to the father-son recycle drive. He said yes, so you're off the hook. Aren't you happy? No, I am not happy, Petey. You are my only son, and I will not allow you to go without me. But I already invited him. Then uninvite him. I can't. Then I will. It's time for me to stand up like a man. I will be your escort to the father-son dance. It's not a dance! Then why did I buy this corsage? <gasps> you comfortable? Can I get you anything? Hmm. There seems to be some confusion in your file. What's your name, sweetheart? Teresa McDougal. Where were you born? Don't mess with us, baby cakes. Your so-called daughter's being questioned in the other room, and she's singing like a canary. So I'll ask you one last time. Where were you born? Canada. All right, good enough. Let's go get your check. So you know for next time, you can do this online. Look, you seem like a nice guy, but Petey is my son, which makes me his father. Which means I'm the one who should take him to the father-son whatchamacallit. Look, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but recycling is one of my pet projects. I invented the blue bin. Few people know that. Why don't we both take him? No son of mine is showing up with two daddies at something as important as a whatchamacallit. Well, I already told him yes. I can't say no now. You can if I tell you to. You will if I tell you to, and I'm telling you to. No, I don't think so, Jimmy. I don't think you know who you're dealing with. Since you brought it up, you do look kind of familiar. Okay. I didn't want to have to do this. Oh, my God. You're Jimmy Falcone. All right, you could take the kid. I am not Jimmy Falcone. I don't even know who that is. Of course you are. Come here, I want to show you something. I've always been a mafia nut. I totally followed your trial. So I'm dying to know, when you whacked Sammy the Sparrow, did you really use a lead pipe? No, it was an axe handle. And I am not Jimmy Falcone. And was your Uncle Cheech really the wheel man on the Altamonte Foods heist? Nah, it was Nicky the Nail. It was supposed to be Cheech, but he was holed up in a hotel in Jersey with a school teacher he met. Funny story, really. I mean, I am not Jimmy Falcone! I can't believe I didn't recognize you right away. All right, fine, you got me. What do you want? I want us to be friends, Jimmy. Ah, oh, for f sake. What do you think would happen if we was made, Cheech? I thought we was made. No, I know we're made men. I mean, what if we was made by somebody here in Vagina? I don't care who done it, Jimmy. Just so long as we was made. <laughs> I hope this is good, Jimmy. I was polishing my knob. Look how shiny it is. Now, what seems to be the problem? Listen, I'm just wondering, hypochondriacally speaking, what would happen if we was made? What are you talking about? You see what I mean? It's hard to follow. I'm just wondering what you feds would do if somebody recognized us. Would you, I don't know, waste him so that the person that was made wouldn't have to do it himself? No, nothing would happen to the person who recognized you, but we would immediately move you and your family north. I thought this was north. There's a more north? So north you'll sh your pants just for the heat. But why do you ask? Have you been spotted? No, not at all. Uh, the thing is, there's this father-son dance coming up at the high school, and I'm wondering if you wanted to take Petey. Why, Jimmy? So you can stay home and watch porn and drink cheap wine? Well, I won't be part of it. But Canada, where poop is your friend and also your blanket. We did it! We totally burned Johnny Canuck! Oh, I, I feel kind of bad now that I know his name. This is gonna buy a lot of candy. All right, but only one piece a night and you must brush immediately after. Will you knock it off? What? I'm still in character. We're home now. You're not my mother. You never had a baby. I knew this day would come. Gina, it's natural to be curious about where babies come from. Who said I'm curious? When a man and a woman love each other, they have a lot of intercourse. A lot. Hey, I am not hearing where babies come from from you. I don't want to get too technical because I'm not a doctor. But when a man's peeper gets hard... Goodbye!
You get back here, young lady. I am still pretending to be your mother. And if that's not enough, may I remind you, it's my name on the check. Nothing is worth this. You can have it all. And scene. Petey, I thought it over, and you can go to the father-son whatchamacallit with wheat then. Seriously, Pop? Oh, man, you're the best! I do what I can, son. Wait then, it's me, Jimmy. I think you are right about us being friends. What do you say we go snowshoeing? Out in the tundra, where no one can see us or hear us for miles. So after the Campanelli boys got through with them, we had to start calling them Johnny Two Legs. <laughs> Amazing. Tell me another one. All right, here's one. A few years back, we was robbing a safe of Frankie three to the right, eight to the left, seven to the right. Nobody could figure out the combination. So we blew it up! Wow, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to wonder if I know too much. I know your name, the crimes you've committed, where you're in hiding. If this were a movie, you'd have to whack me! Yeah, if this was a movie. Oh, crap. Oh, please, no! But you gotta understand, I so don't want to do this. I never had me a fan before. Please, Jimmy. I won't tell anyone, I promise. I don't want to die. I have a family. Well, I don't, but I'm cloning one in the lab. Don't do it, Pop. He's my only friend in Canada. He's my only friend anywhere. You gotta do it, Jimmy. He made you. And by that, I mean he recognized you. Want me to do it, Pop? Get your ass home and clean this kitchen, you son of a bitch! Daddy! Please, Pop, let him go. I'll never ask you for anything again. Just do this for me, your firstborn male, please! Sincerely yours, Petey. Alright, Wheaton. You caught yourself a break. Let's head back. Thank you, thank you. And I meant it when I said I'll never tell anyone. Jimmy, I have homes all over the world. Paris, Beijing, Rome. I hang out with world leaders and movie stars. I don't want them to know I live in Regina. You know, my family invented ice fishing. Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? I'm Jimmy McDougal, formerly Jimmy Falcone. I used to be a big shot in the New York Mafia until I turned rat to keep from being whacked. It wasn't easy turning on my old friends, but them turning on me first made it a little easier. But the hardest thing I ever had to do was to tell my family we had to go into witness protection. So, guys, I got something important to say. You know how all my friends are trying to kill me? Yes, Daddy. It's all you ever talk about. You really shouldn't bring your work home with you. Well, I was thinking, to fix the problem, maybe we should leave town. What? I hate you! But I'm Blas Campo! We love it here! No freaking way! For once, I agree with your idiot uncle! No freaking way! Okay, let's move. And that's how we came to be living here in Vagina... Regina... Saskatchewan. But if you think it's gonna keep this family from sticking together, Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it! Forget about it! Forget about it! Oh, forget about it! Okay, you, Elephant Man, your pony didn't come in, you're into me for 500. Dollface, you done all right, you got three big ones coming. This ain't been your week, Randy. Your no-show puts you in a hole for ten lodge, and I want something now. This just ain't satisfying. 
But in for a penny, in for a pound. I see. No, thank you for calling Principal Pistagas. Do you know what your daughter did? I just got off with the principal. Got off with the principal. <laughs> this is serious. Gina's suspended for a week. Apparently, she's been selling candy to other kids, which is forbidden on school property. Look, I'm sure she has a good reason. It was probably just to make money. Hey, Ma, guess what? I was sent home early for good behavior. Oh, and how do you plan to explain the rest of the week, young lady? Busted. Damn straight you busted. Your principal called. No TV for a week. Pissed again! You done? Uh-huh. Teresa, can we have a girl talk? Of course. I'm just glad you're finally admitting that you're a girl. A guy starts one Twilight fan club and he's branded for life. I need help with a girl. That girl. <laughs> now, if she has bad taste, too, you got it made. I can't even bring myself to talk to her. Aw, that's so sweet. Coming to your big sister for advice on love. All right, Petey. I'll have you banging her in no time. I was hoping to carry her books, but whatever works. First thing we need to do is get this girl to know who you are. But she can't know the real you or she'd set herself on fire. You've got to be strong, confident, sure of yourself. Okay, strong, confident, sure of myself. You think she'd like that? Petey, women don't like wimps. They want to be swept off their feet by a dominant, rock-hard son of an oil baron. What? Just go over there and be aggressive. She's yours for the taking. I'm strong, tough, alpha. Strong, tough, alpha. Hey! What? Uh, love me? Wow. Just, wow. That's it. My entire stash. You clean me out. No TV for a week, young lady. Never do something like this again. You've embarrassed the whole family. Come on, no one's really embarrassed. It's just a figment of speech. It's not that. How am I ever going to learn to be a no-good hustler if I ain't got no role models? <laughs> you got me, don't you? But you're all washed up. Washed up? You know, I still got a thing or two I can teach you. For example, I never would have got caught for moving cheap loot like this. Whoa, whoa, this Canadian candy is primo stuff. You can't even get this in the States. Try it. First taste is free. It's all free. We just took it from you. My God, he's choking. Someone call an ambulance. What's 911 in Canadian? Holy mother of God, that is good. It's better than good. It's... What's a word that means better than good? Oh, what's all this racket about? A man can't hear his own pornography. Try this. It's Canadian candy. I thought Pam Anderson was Canadian candy. Maron, this stuff's better than anything we got back home. Fat Americans are paid through the nose for this stuff. Hold it. Hold it. I'm getting an idea. It's coming. It's percolating. It's percolating. It's dripping. Dripping. Got it! We'll smuggle this stuff into the States and make a fortune. We'll take prohibition to a whole new level. All right, boys, you're off the hook. This is the thing I've been looking for. Something to get my blood flowing. What do you think, Cook? Mmm, come on. Passport. See, Jimmy? I told you bribing a border guard would be a snap. Some suspicious looking boxes, but there's nothing we can do. They're taped shut. <laughs> Great to be back in the old U.S. of A. Hey, everyone. I'm Captain Candy Pants. Come and get your candy in my pants. <laughs> yes, yes, keep going. Get deeper. Scram, we're taking over. This is our turf now. But I always work here. I'll give you a free taffy pull. I got your taffy pull right here. <laughs> You're all working for me now. You got a problem with that? <laughs> well, 
Like taking candy from a baby. And then selling it to another baby. Here's your taste, boss. The hell you doing in fur coats? I told you to keep a low profile. You're gonna get us all pinched. It's in my wife's name. What did I just tell you? Not too bright, but the good little learners. You know, I haven't felt this alive since that day I got stabbed at the racetrack. Yeah, those were good times. Mister, I'd like four of everything. Looks good. Cheech, give me stuff. There you go, kid. The finest uncut cocoa solids Canada has to offer. Don't do them all at once. Thanks, but I'm not the one who needs advice. We're shutting you dirtbags down! Freeze! Food and delicious candy administration! You're under arrest for supplying a weak-willed American populace with treats from a different and therefore inferior country! I was framed! I'll wait for you, Jimmy! I can't believe how much this thing vibrates. Take your time, Jimmy! What in God's name is wrong with you? Uh, hello. I try and I try and I try. I play the bad guy, I play the good guy. Every day, I wake up and I say, today's the day they'll get it. But do you? No, we don't know. What more do I have to do? I mean, really, you tell me. What more must I do for you to at long last get it? I don't know. I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. Maybe if I can just understand what goes on in those warped little minds of yours. Why would you risk everything for just a few hundred dollars? Jimmy told me to! McCool, you wouldn't understand. Try me. I miss the action. I sit around the house being a dad. I go to work and have a job. What kind of life is that? But something like this, it gave me that adrenaline rush I used to get every day in the old life. Is that all? Well, why didn't you say so? Jimmy, if you want an adrenaline rush, I know just the thing. You gotta be shitting me. This, my friend, is action. Looks more like a bunch of dusty guys trying to put the moves on farm animals. On the surface, perhaps, but look deeper, Jimmy. Imagine it. You're on top of a bull, hanging on for dear life. Your blood is boiling in your veins, adrenaline flooding your brain. Your only thought, to best the beast before he takes your life. You don't hear the roar of the crowd flowering their adulation upon you. You can't hear them chanting, Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy. No, they're chanting McCool, McCool, McCool. Jimmy, Jimmy. McCool, McCool. A hundred bucks says Jimmy, Jimmy. Another hundred says I kick your ass. Jimmy, I don't gamble for money. That's what gambling is. But if you insist on humiliating yourself, I will wager you for honor. Great. How much is that in American? The loser must, in a clear baritone, extending from the diaphragm, declare that the other is a better man than himself. You're on. I got one question. If a man does it to a girl sheep, that's not gay, right? I mean, the church is okay with that. I don't know. I'm not Catholic. Hello? What do you mean, hello? I've been trying to reach you for two days. I figured I'd be your one phone call. Cookie, calm down. McCool was my one phone call. They took my cell phone, and by the time I got it back, I forgot. What? Oh, you forgot. I already told the kids you were dead. Gina, your father's alive. Put his cigars back where you found him. I just can't catch a break. Hello? Is this the guy who said, and I quote, I never would have got caught for moving cheap loot like this. Well, you did get caught, and now I'm smoking all your cigars. And that's what you get for cutting me out of my own scam. Cookie, who was that? Jimmy, the whole family's going to hell in a handbasket because of you. Look, Cook, I'm sorry. I'll be home as soon as I can. But I'm at a rodeo, and I gotta prove to McCool that I'm a better man than myself. Could you just say you're at a strip joint, you fat f***? What did she say? The usual. I'm not sure about this, Teresa. Petey, really? This is how you have to dress if you want girls to notice you. It just feels a little... busy. Listen, dum-dum, I watch a show called The Way of the Pickup, and the guy who hosts it, Enigma, says if you want to get the girls, you gotta dress like a schizo freak. It's called peacocking. Well, I refuse to follow the advice of some perverted charlatan. My dignity is too important. 
He's been with 482 different women. Should I add a top hat? Okay, Petey. Enigma says that 90% of becoming a successful pickup artist is learning to overcome your fear of rejection. And to do that, you need to get rejected a lot. Teresa, I could write a book about being rejected. In fact, I have. But it was rejected. You're gonna ask out every girl who walks past you, and you're gonna get rejected so many times, you'll never care about it again. But what if one of them accepts? Petey, if you're not gonna take this seriously... Back off, bitch! Those shoes are mine! <sighs> Excuse me, ma'am, would you like to go on a date? Hello there, miss. You look lovely today. Excuse me, but I, I, I couldn't help but notice. Oh, Teresa's right. This isn't so bad. Who cares if they don't like me? It's very freeing. I'm a bedwetter. Do you think I have pretty eyes? I masturbate all the time. All the time. Hey, you want to play with my boa? Why, yes, I would, young man. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. It's okay, honey. I saw you. It's very sexy. Ah, sh You sure you want to go through with this, McCool? I'm not gonna go easy on you. It's not my style. So I'll give you one last chance to back out. McCools don't back out, Jimmy. They thrust in. Okay, it's your funeral. I just got one question. What's with these freaking pants? Me? I like them. I enjoy the draft. Woo! <laughs> Yee-haw! Yee-haw! Yeah! 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 Woo! Yee-haw! <laughs> Yee-haw! <laughs> oh, ah, ah. Okay? I can't take it no more, Cheech. My face is cut, my muscles are torn, my ribs are cracked, and there's no skin left on my ass. You saying you're giving up? Jimmy, you can. You'd have to tell McCool he's a better man. Plus, you can still win, because a bull riding's worth more points than all the other events combined. How's that for exposition? I don't know. Maybe I can pull it together for one more event. Watch this, Jimmy! No hand! <laughs> Toughest, most manliest man in the whole wide world. McCool. Yes. I can't watch this. You are a better man than I. Thank you, Jimmy. It takes a big man to say that. And I think it's safe to say you found the action you were looking for. Oh, and one more thing. I found something I believe is yours. Hey, Jimmy. He just handed you your ass. him! Pops! Pops! What was the rodeo like, huh? What did that copper's stupid face look like when he saw you're the biggest, baddest guy out there? Did you ride the horse like this? Huh? Or like this? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I pretty much just rode the horse the normal horse riding way. Wow. I started to think that maybe you'd lost all your moves, that you'd gone soft, you know? But you sure showed me cool, didn't you, Pops? Yeah, I sure did. Too bad you couldn't have been there to see it, because turns out I did so well, so perfected it, that they decided there will never have to be another rodeo ever again, anywhere, ever. Thank you so much for walking me home, Petey. It's become such a dangerous neighborhood. You live between a church and a police station. Well, you never know. Well, I guess I should be heading off. No, no, stay. I'll make some cocoa. Um, I'm not sure this is appropriate. Well, why wouldn't it be appropriate? I suppose it wouldn't be if something untoward were to happen. 
Are you thinking about something untoward? No, 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 of course not. Well, good. Coco it is. Hot? Creamy? <gasps> Coco. You know, I like talking to you, Petey. People are so hung up with age, but really, it's just a number. But yours is so much higher than mine. You seem nervous, Petey. Are you nervous, Petey? I mean, I guess so. I know. It must be so hard to be a young man these days. All the rules are changing. The pressures, the contradictions, the confusion. Yeah, I'm pretty confused right about now. I know. And I want to hear all about it. There, there. There, there. There. <laughs> Quite the day you've had. You must be exhausted becoming a rodeo champion. Nah, it wasn't too bad. Kind of invigorating, actually. You're lying. Why do you say that? Because I found this. It's not mine. Oh, please. You didn't beat McCool. Odds are he mopped the floor with you. The man is practically built for horse wrangling. Or lassoing, or caressing the body of a middle-aged woman. Why is your upper lip sweating? It's not! And why'd you lie to me? You know I don't care if you win a stupid rodeo or not. It's not the rodeo. It's everything. I used to be someone. I used to be the big man in town. And now, I'm not even a man. I'm just some poor schnook who has to tell a Mountie he's a better man than me. It's demobilizing. You shut your mouth. You're Jimmy Falcone. And Jimmy Falcone's a fighter, not a quitter. I don't give a damn about a rodeo or losing it to some Mountie, but you do. So suck it up and be the man I fell in love with. You're right. I'm going to take that Mountie down. Hand me my ass. Jimmy, the other way. Ass backwards, so that's where the expression comes from. Manure. Jimmy, what are you doing here? You already conceded. Yeah? Well, I'm unconceited. You know when I said you're a better man than me? Well, I'm taking it back. As you wish, but I do advise against it. There's a reason bull riding is worth more than half the points. It's one of the most dangerous sports in the world. So is cheerleading, but I still do it. Now, out of my way. Where the hell have you been? So unclean. Oh my god! No effing way! You did it! Congratulations! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, no more touching! I don't ever want to be touched again! Or smell mothballs! Or see a doily! Or eat a hard candy! Or see dentures come out! Or see weird stockings that go just below the knee! Or see breasts that go just below the knee! He just completely ignored me. That is so hot. Petey! Petey, wait up! All right, Bull. I've got a lot riding on this. So like I told my wife on our wedding night, give me eight seconds and I'll be on my way. Whoa! Ow! Oh! Okay, I asked nicely. Now we do it my way. Oh! Stay down, Jimmy! Don't get up, Daddy! You can't do it, Pop! Stop it, Pop! It's embarrassing! Jimmy, enough! <laughs> ah. Jimmy, stop! You're killing yourself! You have heart! Tremendous heart! I admit it, but no bet is worth this! It is to me. All right, if it will make you end this madness, fine. You're a better man than I, Jimmy McDougal. A better man than I. Tell me something I don't know. Jimmy, you did it! 
He said it! You won! Way to hang in there, Pops! It was amazing, Daddy! Jimmy, can you do it again? I was in the John. I began the day as a schnook. But now, I am a man! Me too. La 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 How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a big shot in the New York crime family. Now I'm in witness protection in Canada. But I'll never forget that day. I was forced to leave the only home I've ever known. Cookie, kids, get your butts in gear. Let's get this vacation started. Canada awaits. Daddy, just because we're going overseas doesn't make this a vacation. I ain't denying it. I was in denial. I couldn't face the fact that I was leaving everyone I ever loved and taking my wife and kids with me. Isn't this fun? A family road trip. Who's up for another round of window uppy downy? Up, down, up, down. Whoa. Up, up, he down. always knows what it's gonna do. All right, you'll be under RCMP protection from here on. Off you go. It's cool. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Bienvenue. Come along, I have blankets and whiskey for all of you. This will warm your cockles. If it's gonna warm my cockles, I'll need a bigger blanket. I'm Special Agent Straight McCool. My mission is to help you assimilate, keep a low profile, and ensure you don't violate our nation's laws. I'm sorry. Violate what? <laughs> what a spirited group. I loved this assignment the minute I was given it. Let the protection begin. Hop in. You gotta be shitting me. And then they took us to this crazy place called Vagina... Regina. Saskatchewan. But if any of you are thinking about a vacation up here, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he rented out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. City, home of the Jews, the body of mobster Paul Vincenzo was pulled from the Hudson River. Foul play is suspected. Hey, look! Paulie the target got whacked. I can't believe it. He was always so careful. I wonder who did it. I'm guessing Vinnie April did it. The Hudson's always been his go-to. Nah, look at the bruises on his face. Must have been Benny the Bruiser. My money's on Timmy, sissy bum. That guy will f*** you up. Two ones! Holy craps! Snake Eyes! It was my cousin Sammy! That's the worst nickname ever! No, it's my cousin, comma, Sammy. Comma, Sammy? That's even worse. Your nephew, Nimrod! Snake Eyes Sammy! The guy's in trouble! If we can figure out he did it, so can Paulie's crew! Which means he's about to get whacked! I gotta save him! Ah, he's always about to get whacked. He's a good boy. You know, I still can't believe you stole Cookie from him. Whoa! I didn't steal no one. He was sent to Juvie, and Cookie needed his shoulder to cry on. All I did was show up with a hanky and a salami. You were so sweet, you big lug. You repoed my heart. And you stole mine. And then I stole you that necklace. So I hereby announce my candidacy for student council president. What's your platform? My platform? Thanks for asking, concerned student. If you elect me, I will ban all corporate sponsorship from school grounds. Let's send the message that young minds are not for sale. Who's with me? That was painful to watch. What I have to say is important. I, I just can't get anyone to listen. Oh, little brother, you're so lame. The key to drawing a crowd isn't what you say, it's what you show. Thanks for coming to my brother's 
president thingy. We love you! And I have loved a ton of you. So I want you all to vote for my brother on the day you're supposed to vote, whenever that is. The issues. Tell them the issues. First off, more corporate sponsorship. <laughs> it's no more corporate sponsorship. Oh, it's just one word. It doesn't matter. More bullying. <laughs> It's no more bullying. You have to add the word no. Okay. No more funding for music and the arts. I got your message, Jimmy. How can I be of assistance? I got a problem. My cousin Snake Eye Sammy whacked Paulie the target. That's a serious accusation. I meant it as a compliment. But trust me, it was Sammy. He left his dice that always come up ones. All us wise guys have calling cards. My dad left an Italian sausage, Cheech left a cocktail onion, my calling card was a calling card. I figured I'd give the grieving family some minutes. I get that. Horse also likes to leave a calling card. Hey, same as Johnny Brandflakes. You gotta get Sammy out of there. When police guys track him down, they'll torture him to rat me out. How could Sammy know where you are? I texted him. <laughs> Mom, you have to talk Teresa out of running. She's just gonna embarrass herself. Petey, I think it's great that your sisters finally realize there's more to life than binging, purging, and shopping. Are you sure you're not a little threatened by your chances? Are you kidding? I'm totally threatened by your chances. That's why you gotta get her out of this. Petey, I'm not going to choose one of my children over the other. I love you all equally. You'll just have to make the best of it. Don't say I never do you any favors. I never say you don't do me any favors. Your whole job is doing me favors. I know, I just wanted a good entrance line. Hey, Kaz, guess who? Sammy! Jimmy. <laughs> hey, everyone, Sammy's here. I'll leave you two to your embrace. But remember, Jimmy, you vouched for him, so you're responsible for him. Hey, how you hey, doing? How is the trip, cuz? A breeze. Canadian cops are so freaking friendly. Which reminds me, I got presents for all of yous. Cheech, you son of a gun. Petey, you's getting so big. Teresa, holy moly. You must be the little squirt. And Cookie, I'm sorry I dropped your present in the squad car, but may I say, you look like a million. You're so full of it. Keep it coming. <laughs> Wait a sec. Is that pasta for Joel that I'm smelling? Your favorite. Welcome to Regina. Stun gun? Just what I always wanted. I'm a huge fan of your work, Cousin Snake Eyes. I can't wait to learn from the master. Ah! I'm all yours, kiddo. As soon as I'm done catching up with the real master, I am humbled to be in your presence. Really? I thought the folks back home would be mad about how I ratted everybody out. Ah, forget the ratting. Concentrate on the killing. You whacked on Gambini, for Christ's sakes. You're a legend. A legend? Really? You kidding me? Your nickname back home is the guy who whacked on Gambini. Now that's a nickname. So much better than that cousin comma guy. The guy who whacked Don Gambini. It's got a nice ring to it. Wait, you saying I can go back home and they won't whack me? Oh, they'll still whack you, but with respect. Oh, that's so nice of them. But Sammy, I ain't like I used to be. I keep a low profile, stay out of trouble, and now you got it too. Sit down. Let me explain how life here works. Ah! Gina! If you're gonna have a stun gun, you gotta use it responsible. Give me that thing. First off, you gotta... Jesus! What's wrong with this? They used to have a seat. Take it! Just take it! Cookie, I'm sorry I dropped your present in the squad car. I feel terrible. But you look great. I had to give you something. So, here. Oh, that's beautiful! Wait a minute. Isn't this the same necklace you gave Teresa? No. Mom, I can't find my new necklace. Maybe. <laughs> Sammy, you haven't changed one bit. Neither have you, Cookie. You haven't aged a day since high school. Yeah, those were good times. Remember the time we made out in the confession booth and confessed in real time? How could I forget? It was like, oh, God, Hail Mary. Oh, God, Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> and remember that time at junior prom when we kissed on the dance floor and the principal separated us so you gave him a wedgie? It was my very first kiss. 
and my very first wedgie. Mm. 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 Sammy, get out here! What are you drinking? So, that just happened. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Will you quit talking about my womb? Jesus Christ, you talk! It's not that big a deal. You got a light? I... I can't believe it. Yeah, I know it's bad for me. I'm trying to cut down. I tried the patch. That works for sh**. All right, let's get down to business. Your ex kissed you, and now you're feeling ashamed and conflicted. You know exactly what's going on in my heart. You're truly miraculous. You do know I'm a figment of your imagination, right? You're too modest. Whatever. These feelings you have are completely normal. You fell for Jimmy because he was a bad boy, but he ain't no more. And to Sammy. And these feelings won't go away unless you do something about them. You think I should tell Jimmy? Hell no! Do you know how Joseph was when I had someone else's kid? Moping and whining all the time? He wouldn't let it go. Always asking, who was bigger, Mary? Who was bigger? Who needs that, Cyrus? So what are you telling me? Get it out of your system. Have some fun with a guy. <gasps> You mean commit adultery? I could never do that. Technically, you already have. No, I haven't. When Jimmy gives it to you, you think about Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, Carrot Top. I don't know what that's about. The point is, it's a slippery slope. No, there's a big difference between thinking about someone and doing him. I cannot believe the Virgin Mary is telling me to have sex with another man. You're gonna burn in hell anyway, so what are you waiting for? These commandments aren't gonna break themselves. <laughs> I figured I'd give you a tour. Get you used to your new home. Oh, after that meal, a walk's just what I need. Ain't nothing like that woman's cooking, huh? She's a real keeper. Yeah, cookie's the best. So, you guys happy? Yeah, sure. For real happy? Or I'm just saying that because I'm a married guy and I'm dead inside happy? Closer to the first one? On a scale of one to ten. Sammy, what are you getting at? Whoa, this is the little Italy in this town. Any great? Sometimes we just come here and hang out for hours. How's the food? You kidding me? The place is run by a Chinaman. It won't happen overnight, but you'll adjust. See? Look at them. That used to be us. You're misremembering. We used to sneak up behind wimps like that and take their money. Then we'd force them to tell us where they lived and hold up their parents. Sammy, cut it out. Listen. Going straight ain't bad, especially in a city where there's, like, zero crime. Exactly. It's a freaking gold mine. We're gonna clean up here. No. Look, I pulled a lot of strings to get you into witness protection. Well, one. I only got one string, but I pulled it. So we can't live the old life. Now, come on. Let's go to Little Italy and get an egg roll. This is where I work. It's a good job. A great job. I love this job. Proud of this job. You believe me? Jimmy, this is my bad. I was probably unclear when I explained it. Our policy is that staples must be lined up vertically, not horizontally. That's it. Do you have ow, any ow, idea ow, 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 who ow, ow. this man is? So, anyway, Toby, I was wondering if you could give my cousin a job. You'll just wind up making a fool of yourself. It's not like this is something you even care about. You're the one who'll make a fool of herself. You don't even have a platform. Hello? No, a platform is issues. A president should know this. You don't have any issues. Well, actually, you have lots of issues, but nothing to run on. Politics is a bitch. Bitch. Issues I'm, like, running on. <laughs> If you elect me your school president, you will get to look at me all the time. And girls, if you don't vote for me, I will so screw you over. Thank you for seeing me, Jimmy. I didn't know I had a choice. Well, you didn't. I was being polite. Although I guess it was rude of me to say that, and for that, I'm sorry. Uh, me too? What's up? The crime rate, Jimmy. And I have no doubt that it's mostly due to your cousin Sammy. You can't prove nothing. Not yet, but it's just a matter of time. 
If Sammy goes to jail and talks, we'll have to move you to Quebec, and you have enough trouble with English. Do you really want to live somewhere where they speak French? I'm torn. I love their fries, toast, and kissing, but berets make my face look fat. I'm not kidding around, Jimmy. Get him in line, or else. For Canada, with a per capita murder rate only slightly worse than Denmark. I just spoke to McCool. You gotta help me with Sammy. What's wrong? The guy's robbing anything he could get his hands on, and he's gonna ruin everything for us. You're being too hard on him, Jimmy. <laughs> Let me see that. It's so much fun, Ma. Best toy I ever got. So this is what a stun gun looks like. So where was I? Oh yeah, Sammy. You're being too hard on him. He's a bad boy, like you used to be. I think you're jealous. Why would I be jealous? Did I say you're jealous? I meant Sammy naked. I mean, how can I help? I can't watch him all the time. So when I'm at work and the kids are at school, you gotta keep an eye on his every move. You gotta be on him like white on rice. If he tries to get you off, you dig in and hold on tight. Where he goes, you go. When he comes... Stop it! What? I don't know. Look, Jimmy, as long as we're on the subject of Sammy, there's something I should maybe tell you. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I wish I could have some kind of sign telling me what to do. Guess who just robbed that bank? You idiot! <laughs> now that's what I call a sign. Do you know how much trouble you could get us into? Jimmy, let him go. Let's at least hear his side of the story. Fine. Thank you, Cookie. Okay. I staked out the bank, I hit the bank, I made off with the loot. Bada me! Let me at him! Jimmy, stop! He's a reasonable man. Just talk to him. It took us a while to adjust to the rules when we got here. He's your cousin for crying out loud. Blood. Hey, everyone. I'd like you to meet my new doll. Kill him. And in second place with 12 votes... Jason Hitler! Nine! 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 Don't worry, mine, Jason. There are better ways to seize power! And your new president, with 33 votes, Peter McDougal! What? How could I not have won? Teresa, you never registered yourself as a candidate. But Petey said he'd do that for me. You didn't do that for me? Politics is a bitch, bitch. <laughs> Whoa! What was that for? Jimmy saves your life, you do nothing but ignore everything he tells you, then you make a pass at his wife, and then you show up with some bimbo! In my defense, I made a pass at his wife and was turned down. That's why I got a bimbo. And what the hell did you kiss me for anyway? It really bothered me. Honestly, Cookie, I've been a wreck about it too. I got caught up in the moment. It was nostalgia. Old times. You look good. And you smelled nice. Ooh. Knock it off! We may have to move because of what you've done. And as crappy as this town is, this is Canada. Things can always get worse. What are you thinking? I don't know, Cookie. I'm not thinking anything. I don't plan things. They just happen. I'm not smart like you and Jimmy and Cheech. We're out of cheese. Who? Where did all that come from? Sammy robbed the first vagina credit union. He's always been a good boy. No, it's terrible. McCool's already on to him. Sammy's going to get arrested, and we'll all have to move to Quebec City, France. I never liked that, Sammy. We got to get them their money back, but without anyone knowing it was us who returned it. We got to somehow break into the bank and make them take it back. The old reverse heist. Nobody freeze! Put your hands down and get up off the floor! Don't do what I say or you'll all get hurt. Exactly. Instead of outlaws, we'll be in-laws. Hey, Jimmy, I've been thinking. I'm real sorry about all the trouble I caused. I'll do anything to make it right. You just name it. You're going to help Cheech and I return the money. Did I hear you right? You're going to take perfectly good stolen money and return it to a bank? Those crooks? I've never been so ashamed of this family. Gina. You broke my heart, Father. It's go time, boys. Put on your masks. Too bad the mask store was out of friends' masks. 
I had my heart set on being Rachel. Rock and roll. Everyone freeze! This ain't a robbery! Underground, you mugs. Now! Nobody be a hero! Now, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna open a safe, and you're gonna put this money inside it. Have you filled out a deposit slip? It ain't a deposit! Well, if you'd like to make an investment, you'll have to speak with Mr. Fielding. But he's on vacation till Thursday. I just want to give you this money! I can't process anything without an account number. Maybe this'll change your mind. <coughs> well? I can't process anything without an account number. This must be why the reverse heist never caught on. Just take it, will ya? We got me! Dirty screws! What are you doing? I don't know. But we gave the money back! Jimmy! 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 What? Hi. Ah, oh, for f**k's sake. No! No! Don't you die on me, Sammy. Not now. Not here. Not like this. Looks like the bastards got me. Those bastards! It was just a matter of time. I lived a reckless life. I took too many chances. Plenty of unprotected sex. Shh. Don't talk. And Jimmy, I gotta get this off my chest. When we was eight years old, I swept 20 bucks from my dad and blamed it on you. I know. It's okay. And when we was 14 and you got caught with all that weed, I was the one who hit it in your locker. Shh, 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 save your strength. And when we were 16, and your sister got knocked up, that was me. You really gotta stop now. Oh, this was a long time ago. And yesterday, I made a pass at your wife. Earlier today, too. You should probably die now. Okay. Saskatchewan la 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 la